Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from PNY. This is the PNY Accelerate Enthusiast Edition GeForce GTX 770. Let's start off with a quick, quick look at the retail box, which is currently got its shrink wrap on it, so that's taken care of. Uh, PNY, of course, is bringing you the GeForce GTX 770, um, which is one of the newest GPUs from NVIDIA's uh, GTX 700 series. Uh, this card does feature a custom triple fan, triple fan cooler uh, designed by PNY. Also features a lifetime warranty direct from the manufacturer, so that's nice to have. This particular model has 2048 megabytes or 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It also features some cool new NVIDIA techno technology that they've been introducing over the uh, past year or so with the advent of the 600 series as well as the 700 series. So you can see some of the um, gaming performance and whatnot listed here. Uh, but I wanted to also move over to the right side where we can see key features listed. Uh, first off, I did want to say this is based on the GK104 GPU, so it features a full complement of 1,536 CUDA cores via eight SMX units. Uh, this also has, as mentioned, two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 256-bit bus. Uh, you get some 600 series elements such as TXAA and FXAA technology. Of course, you get the uh, NVIDIA Physics uh, Adaptive V-Sync, which can help to uh, minimize uh, tearing when your uh, frame rate drops below the uh, refresh rate of your monitor. Uh, 700 series uh, features include GPU Boost 2.0, which is actually temperature based, so uh, you can set a temperature target for the GPU, and uh, the card will automatically overclock itself up to that temperature target. Uh, it's actually a very uh, useful way of overclocking, and uh, I highly recommend trying it out, especially with this card, since it has the custom cooler from PNY. You also get stuff like uh, 3D Vision, uh, NVIDIA SLI Ready. This uh, can do two-way, three-way, and four-way SLI configurations. Uh, NVIDIA CUDA technology, so um, that can uh, use GPU compute to take advantage of your CUDA cores uh, for stuff like rendering in Adobe Premiere. Uh, also, PCI Express Gen 3, OpenGL, OpenCL support. This one's NVIDIA Shield Ready, so if you do have a Shield unit and you want to stream from your gaming PC over to your handheld shield unit, this video card can accomplish that. Finally, system requirements down here at the bottom. You will want a 600 watt power supply at minimum with a minimum uh, 40, 42 amps on your 12 volt rail. Uh, and then you're also gonna need some hard drive space and whatnot. And then uh, included accessories right there. And let's go ahead and open up the box. Inside the retail box, we have a white box. Inside that box, we have uh, some foam packaging, of course. Uh, this is a sample that's PNY sent us directly, so um, we currently have not really the official driver disc. You will get a driver disc with your retail version of this product, but I recommend going to the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers. Um, NVIDIA does have game-ready drivers when they release a new GPU, but they'll still be doing uh, updates. They'll give you incremental increases in your performance from time to time and also give you better compatibility uh, with newer games as they come out. And there's lots of new games that are coming out very soon, actually. The, uh, the fall game season is going to be awesome this year. Okay, uh, here is the DVI to VGA adapter that you get with just about every video card and that most people don't use, but some people may be still hanging on to an older VGA monitor, so um, good to have on hand. Uh, just bear in mind this is only going to work with one of the DVI ports on the card, and I'll show you which one that is. Uh, here is sort of a generic installation guide for what a video card is. You can tell it's generic because it still has AGP on it. Uh, but uh, if you do need some help getting this card installed, I'd recommend checking out our How to Build a Computer series over on our on Newegg TV, if you're not already watching this video there. And that should give you some help. That's all for accessories. Let's take a closer look at the card. And now here we have the card itself, and I'm going to start out with the traditional card measurement to determine how big the card is. About 11 inches measured from the bracket there. So make sure you give yourself at least that much space in your case, or if you're shopping for a case, make sure it supports a video card that is that long. Uh, you'll notice the custom cooler first off uh, with this particular card, PNY logo fans. You have three of those. This is what is known as an open air design. So uh, we have a shroud which is going around the outside. This is made of plastic, the upper part, uh, upper plastic part right here. Uh, you will notice that there are gaps. So you can see some gaps here along the side where you can see some of the uh, aluminum fins from the uh, heat sink pointing out. Also over on this side, some more gaps. So um, in my experience, 
although I have not tested this card specifically, uh, open air coolers like this will help keep your GPU temperatures low, but that will be a little bit at, at a little bit of a sacrifice of ejecting a lot of the warmer air into your case. Now, as long as you have good airflow going through your case, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to warm up any of the other components, but it is something to bear in mind. Uh, but typically speaking, an aftermarket cooler like this will generally provide better cooling than the reference design cooler. Uh, I did want to point out another kind of cool feature, this one. This uh, lower part here that's also black, it blends very nicely with the upper part, but the upper part's plastic. Lower part here is actual metal. That actually goes around the entire length of the card all along the PCB. So that's going to help uh, keep the PCB nice and rigid. It's going to help uh, keep uh, away from some of the droopage effects that you sometimes see with video cards once it's actually plugged into the, uh, the socket and all installed. Another uh, unique thing about this card is that they've actually done a custom PCB here for the 770. And uh, I can show you actually the reference design 770. Although let me flip it upside down so that they're kind of about the same. Okay. So there's the reference design uh, on the bottom and uh, this design on the top. Uh, the PNY version up here actually has a shorter PCB, but the overall card is longer due to the, uh, the shroud sticking out. And you can see a bit of that metal frame sticking out at the bottom. Also compared to the reference design, just to give you guys a closer look, kind of side by side. So the reference design card overall is a little bit shorter, uh, but does, it does have a closed style shroud. Apart from that, uh, the GPUs themselves are, of course, the same. This is based on uh, the GK104 GPU. It's the same GPU that was used in the GTX 680. 1,536 CUDA cores, 128 texture units, uh, 8 SMX units. That gives you all the CUDA cores. 32 raster operators. Uh, this is going to have a core clock of 1,046 megahertz. Uh, if you're comparing to the GTX 680, that's 1,046 as compared to 1,006. Uh, and then this has a boost clock of 1,085, and that's again as compared to the 680's 1,058. However, this does have GPU Boost 2.0, so uh, that combined with the aftermarket cooler is going to help get you uh, overclock speeds utilizing GPU Boost that are even beyond the listed boost clock of 1,085 megahertz. Another big difference from this card uh, compared to the 680 is that the memory on this card is actually clocked at 7 gigahertz, which is really, really fast. The GTX 680 uh, was clocked at uh, 6 gigahertz, or 7,000 uh, megahertz, I should say. And uh, of course, they're still both operating on a 256-bit bus. For power requirements down here at this end, you have an 8-pin supplemental uh, PCI Express power connector and a 6-pin, so make sure you plug both of those in. Again, uh, as referred to on the box, a 600-watt uh, power supply is recommended for this card. Apart from that, uh, you can see through the uh, plastic part of the shroud here, you get a pretty massive aluminum fin array. The fans are going to, going to be blowing air downward over those fins. You also notice, uh, as you can possibly see in there, you got copper heat pipes. Uh, those are making direct contact uh, with the uh, GPU itself and helping to uh, disperse that heat out to the fin arrays where it can be pushed away by the air movement of the fans. Let's see, am I forgetting anything? Oh, yes. Over here you have a couple SLI fingers, so you can use that to set up a two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI if you want to purchase a few more of these cards. And then uh, you also have PCI Express Gen 3 right down there at the bottom. Physically, it's exactly the same as PCI Express Gen 2. Uh, you get about double the bandwidth with PCI Express Gen 3, um, but bear in mind if you are running an older system that has PCI Express Gen 2, don't fret, you can still plug this card in. And the difference in speeds from Gen 2 to Gen 3, generally speaking, is only a, a couple points. So it's not a huge deal if you're buying this card as an upgrade. You can also see the bracket right there where your GK104 GPU resides just below. Let's finish off with a look at your out video outputs here at the back. Uh, i got a couple dual link DVI connectors right there. These can do 2560 by 1600 resolution. Top one here is digital only. So if you are going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, use it with the bottom one. That's DVI-I, it includes digital and analog connections. The analog is a little plus shape right there at the end. You also have a DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 1.4, uh, and you can do four monitors out of this single card. Uh, you can use three of them for gaming, and you can use the fourth as a companion monitor to pull up web pages or that sort of thing. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the PNY Accelerate Enthusiast Edition GeForce GTX 770. Uh, a couple things I wanted to point out. One uh, accessory that was not included in our box because we did have a review sample directly from PNY is a Molex with two Molex plugs to an 8-pin PCI Express power connector for your power uh, delivery right here. 
that will be included in the retail version, just wasn't shown in this video, wanted to point that out. Another thing you might notice is that although this does have a custom cooler, it's still running at the stock speeds of the 770 as set by NVIDIA. Now, I mentioned GPU Boost 2.0 quite a few times. Uh, if you want to get yourself some uh, aftermarket uh, overclocking software, which is readily available from quite a few different websites, uh, check out the NVIDIA website, for example, for some more on that. Very, very easy to overclock this card uh, beyond what you see listed on the specs, as well as beyond a lot of the overclock cards that you might find uh, on, on various websites, like Newegg.com, I suppose. So bear that in mind. Uh, this card is going to have a lot of overclocking headroom. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed, uh, don't forget to hit the like button down there. Also, don't, don't forget to subscribe and share the video and all that good stuff. We'll see you all next time on Newegg TV.